Quae meinim seminabur amo eket meta, quoniam qui semina tu carni suo, de carna ad meta corruptionem. Qui autum semina in spiritu, de spiritu meta vita metanum. Bonam autum scient a patientes, non deficiamus tempore enum suo metemus non deficientes. Ergo dum tempus habemus operemur bonum ad omnes, maxime autum ad domesticos fide. Bona vest confiteri domino et salare nomini tuo altissime, ad enunciandum ani misericordium tuum et veritatum tuum per noctem, Alleluia, Alleluia, quoniam Deus magnus dominus, et rex magnus super omnem terum, Alleluia. Please be seated. This morning after Mass, there will be registration for the annual Fatima Conference, and it is particularly important, if you're interested in attending the banquet, that you register, because this Wednesday is the cutoff day for um, enrollment in the, in the banquet, because the caterer needs to have an exact count. So any questions, please see the sisters after Mass regarding the conference. There will also be a bake sale after Mass sponsored by our girls' sodality. The bands of matrimony are announced for the second time for Sarah Allen and Kevin Bissing. And finally, and most importantly, we'd like to ask for your prayers for Philip Dunphy. Phil was... Um, lived here at the City of Marion, of course, went through our schools, graduated from our school here, but has been living in Oregon the past 12 to 15 years, but has serious medical condition, and tomorrow is going to have a very serious operation uh, for heart valve replacement and um, complications. So please remember Philip Dunphy in your prayers. Today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. The epistle is from St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, if we live by the Spirit, by the Spirit let us also walk. Let us not become desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, even if a person is caught doing something wrong, you who are spiritual, Instruct such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let everyone test his own work, and so he will have glory in himself only, and not in comparison with another. For each one will bear his own burden. 
And let him who is instructed in the word share all good things with his teacher. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows in the flesh, from the flesh also will reap corruption. But he who sows in the spirit, from the spirit will reap life everlasting. And in doing good, let us not grow tired. For in due time we shall reap if we do not relax. Therefore, while we have time, let us do good to all men, but especially to those who are of the household of the faith. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, Jesus went to a town called Naim, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. And as he drew near the gate of the town, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large gathering from the town was with her. And the Lord, seeing her, had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he went up and touched the stretcher, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to thee, arise. And he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And he gave him to his mother, and fear seized upon all, and they began to glorify God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. Thus far the words of today's epistle and Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Immaculate Queen, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. My dearly beloved in Christ, this morning I would like to take for our theme, the epistle. And in today's epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians, we have many counsels, many wonderful bits of advice we can apply but I would like to concentrate on these words. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows in the flesh, from the flesh also will reap corruption. But he who sows in the spirit, from the spirit will reap life everlasting. This is such an important truth for us to keep in mind that everything we do will have a consequence. That every act of penance, every act of self-denial, every prayer will have its reward. And likewise, every sin will have its punishment, its accounting to be rendered. Sadly, so many people in the world are deceived by the devil to thinking that they can get away with something. But with Almighty God, who is all-knowing, no one gets away with anything. And in fact, even in this world, we see that for the most part, sooner or later, someone's misdeeds come to life. How often have you read it in the news that some public figure might have been a politician or an actor or, uh, you know, an athletic star, someone that's prominent, falls from grace because some circumstance, some misdeed of the past came to light maybe even many years later. And in God's justice, often even in this life, an accounting must be rendered, but above all in eternity. And that is something we must always remember, that we will one day render to God an account for all of our thoughts, words, and deeds. He who sows in the flesh will reap corruption. He who sows in the spirit will reap life everlasting. What a man sows, that he will also reap. Now, this reminds us of judgment, of eternity, 
of everlasting life, everlasting punishment, or everlasting reward. And I would like to recommend a book to you. I think every Catholic should read it. And it's a wonderful little book called The Four Last Things by Father Martin von Kochum. Death, Judgment, Heaven, and Hell. As it says in Scripture, remember thy last end, and thou wilt never sin. The problem is that we so easily forget about these great eternal truths. Why did God make us? What is life all about? And we are here for no other purpose than that we will prepare for a, an everlasting happiness with God in heaven. There's a wonderful uh, section from the Book of Wisdom in the Old Testament that is read on feasts of martyrs during the Paschal season. And paraphrasing it is something like this. The wicked are crying out. They're, they're lamenting at the last day, at the great judgment. And they said, those who are living good lives, we esteemed their end without honor. We mocked them. We ridiculed them. We brought them low by our unjust treatment. Look at how now they are raised up above us. And we, now we are suffering for our misdeeds. Think of the great judgment day when all mankind will be gathered before the throne of our Lord. When our Lord ascended into heaven and the disciples were gazing as our Lord gradually ascended into heaven and finally was taken out of their sight, and the two angels by them said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you, will come in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. Imagine that last day when the trumpet will sound and the bodies of all of those that have ever lived will be raised from the dead, reunited to their souls, and our Lord will come in great power and majesty, seated on the clouds, surrounded by angels, and he will come to judge all mankind. And every human being that has ever lived will be gathered together in one place. And then there will be the judgment and every single deed, good or bad, will be revealed in the sight of all. That thought should be frequently present to us as a motivation to help us love and serve God, to carry our cross. And of course, the wicked will lament, they will cry out for the mountains to fall upon them, to save them from the wrath of our Lord. His very countenance, as the author in this book points out, they will strive to hide from his countenance, which will be so severe, demanding an accounting. Whereas on the other hand, those who have lived good Catholic lives, they will see our Lord's welcoming and pleasing countenance, saying, Come, blessed of my Father, into the kingdom prepared for you. How foolish are the people of the world, those who live only for this life. They say stupid things like, Well, if I go to hell, at least my friends will be there. Can you imagine something so utterly foolish? As the author here in this book points out, the more persons there are in hell, the greater is the suffering. And they won't enjoy any companionship from their former partners in sin. They'll hate them all the more. You led me into sin. And that person will say, no, it was you. And they will hate one another because in hell there is no love. There's only hatred. And so we must strive to carry our cross and to think of eternity. We're always preparing for that judgment day, for eternity. Let us be wise. Listen to the words of St. Paul. God is not mocked. This is one of the amazing truths, hard to understand for us. Why does God tolerate evil in this life? It is a mystery. 
we know that he will not tolerate evil forever. But for now, he tolerates it. All of the blasphemy, all of the evil, all of the crime, all of the heinous sins that are committed every day, why does God allow it to continue? It is a mystery. But one day, it will all end, and everyone will be called to render an accounting. God is not mocked. What a man sows, that he will also reap. Let us sow every day good deeds, good thoughts, good words, virtuous living, realizing that all of, all of these sacrifices, all of the trouble that it takes us to flee the occasion of sin to practice virtue, will have its reward, and that reward will be everlasting. Let us keep our thoughts focused on eternity and live for heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Amen. Secular, secular. Amen. Amen.
Sadi Kosmonici, Adivina Institutione Formatia di Mislicine, Pater Noster Quia Sinceri Sancti Vicerunamentum, Adivina Brinkentum, Pia Voluntas Tua, Sacred in Cielo and in Terra, Pater Nostrum Quotidianum Dano Vesolie, Adivita Nobista Vita Nostra, Sacred in Nostrumitimus de Vitoribus Nostris, Ed Nenos in Ducas in Tentazione.
Domini Celestis Operatio, Ud non noster sensus in nobis, sed jucitareus preveniat effectus, per Dominum nostrum Iesum Crispum Fidium Tum, qui te conviva de preniat in unitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Oremus, Deus Fidelium Remunerator Animarum, Presto Beati Tome, Confessoris Tuiaque Pontificis, Cuius venerandam celebramus festivitatem pretibus in dulcentium consequamur, per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Fidium Tum, qui te conviva de preniat in unitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculor. Amen. Dominus Bobiscum, and in the Spirit of God, eaten as a pastor. Deo gracias. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our morning in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, O God, a refuge and our strength. Look down with favor upon thy people who cry to thee. And through the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a blessed Joseph, her spouse of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, do thou mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners and for the freedom and exaltation of Holy Mother Church through the same Christ our Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. 
May the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Let us now renew the consecration of our parish and families to the Sacred Heart of Jesus using the prayer found on page 2 in your prayer, parish prayer and hymn booklets. Most sweet Jesus, humbly kneeling at thy feet, we renew the consecration of our family to thy divine heart. Be thou our King forever. In thee we have full and entire confidence. May thy spirit penetrate our thoughts, our desires, our words, and our works. Bless our undertakings. Share in our joys, in our trials, and in our labors. Grant us to know thee better, to love thee more, to serve thee without faltering. By the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Queen of Peace, set up thy kingdom in our country. Enter closely into the midst of our families and make them thine own through the solemn enthronement of thy sacred heart, so that soon one cry may resound from home to home. May the triumphant heart of Jesus be everywhere loved, blessed, and glorified forever. Honor and glory to the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. Sacred heart of Jesus, protect our families. Prayer for vocations, O Lord Jesus Christ, who it is take to thyself a body and a soul like ours, to teach us the glory of self-sacrifice and service. Mercifully deign to instill in other hearts the desire to dedicate their lives to thee. Give us priests to stand before thy altar and speak the words of thy gospel. Brothers, to assist the priests and to reproduce in themselves thy humility. Sisters, to teach the young and nurse the sick and to administer thy charity to all. Lay people to imitate thee in their homes and families. Amen. St. Thomas of Villanova, pray for us, ye holy Theban legion. Our closing hymn this morning will be, O God of Loveliness, hymn number 64. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.